Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You, and welcome to my show. I have such a treat for you today. Six months ago, I was able to go to Portugal. I was able to go with a group called For Venture Travel, and I was able to cook for these folks for seven days. It was absolutely incredible. Today's recipe is an amazing fresh tomato soup recipe that we all fell in love with. We all didn't order it at this place and we were all very bummed, but we all tried to gobble it up because they served it in these big cauldrons for one person and really it served four people. It was absolutely spectacular. So as we cook this tomato soup together, I'm going to share with you also just some amazing things, my favorite highlights of what I love so much about Portugal. Most of it has to do with food, not all of it though. So stay tuned to this recipe. First thing we're going to do with this amazing tomato soup is we are going to saute our onions. Now, when you think of soup, any soup, do you think you want to put four large onions in it? Not necessarily, but this one calls for four, four large onions. So we are going to put a third of a cup of oil in our pan. This recipe I got from a Portuguese cookbook and it just says oil, so I am just using my um, ooh, I'm smoking, I must be hot. Gotta lower that. Okay, I'm going to put in my four large onions. This is gonna smoke up, so be careful. It'll cool off quickly. We are cooking these bad boys until they are lit and lightly browned. I'm saying that's gonna be about 10 minutes, and I'm cooking them on medium to medium high heat. Going to Portugal was just another part of my Kathy Cooks for Your Dreams come true. You know, getting to cook for people in foreign countries, it's just like pinch me now. It's, it's absolutely amazing. What I learned about with Portuguese food before I even went really set me at ease. They are a casual people that love good, simple, flavorful food. What does that mean? That means they eat a lot of soups and stews. They stew a lot of meat. They grill, they fry. Very rustic. They're, they're not there to impress you with this eye candy. They're here to impress you with the great full flavors of stewed foods and foods that have cooked a long time through braising. One thing that Portugal is really well known for is their pastries. Their, their most famous one is called Pastis Del Nata, Pastis Del Nata. I hope I'm saying that right. And it's basically this, um, this uh, like a phyllo dough and then just custard inside and baked to perfection. Uh, I've never had anything that good in my life. There is uh, one town in particular that it is the best in and that we had to take a train to. And let me tell you, they were good, but the ones also in Lisboa were fantastic. And what I loved also about Portugal is there are still bakeries like on every corner. And they're all selling such delicious cakes and buns and your bica of coffee. Oh, it is absolutely out of this world for a foodie to go there. Okay, so our onions are limp and browned. Took about 10 minutes on about medium, medium, medium high heat. Smelling delicious. Now, the next step, we're gonna add eight large tomatoes and four cloves of garlic. Now, I didn't have eight large tomatoes. You know, I wasn't gonna buy the ones that were like three something a pound. I bought medium size, so, you know, I'm doing 16 tomatoes. Because last time when I did it, I filled up this bowl, so I'm filling it up again. So, eight large, or 16 small or medium size and if I have a few too many that's okay it's no big deal so we're putting these in here that'll cool it down and then we're putting in our garlic now of course I'm using my homemade minced garlic please watch that video you will love it and it will help you so much in the kitchen 
Now, here's the thing with our next step. In the recipe, it says to cover and let simmer for an hour. Well, shoot, that's a long time. You know, I'm trying to make this not so long. So this time I, I'm doing it in my Dutch oven, and I thought, well, I'm gonna cover it, and maybe not, instead of simmer, I'm gonna have it cook a little higher temperature, and maybe I can get that down to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna try, and while our tomatoes and onions are simmering, we can get our condiments ready to sprinkle on top. First thing we're gonna have is parsley. I already chopped this, so you need about a quarter cup of parsley. This will just be sprinkled on top of everybody's soup. The other thing that is super tasty and is optional is to buy chorizo sausage. Now, we, use, we would find chorizo here. Maybe you can find uh, the Portuguese version, which is called chorico. So it's just C-O instead of Z-O. So chorico is what's actually used. And this sausage is already cooked and cured, kind of like a pepperoni. So you're not gonna find it in the, the meat section or by the bacons and all that that are refrigerated. That kind of chorizo or chorico is not what we want here. We want you to go to where you'd probably find your pepperonis or even Hispanic area, and you wanna find a prepackaged chorizo that's already cooked and it's in a vacuum sealed container. And it looks very similar to pepperoni. We're gonna fry these up and get them crispy. And then this is something you can put on top too. And it is absolutely spectacular. All right, these are all crisp. I'm gonna drain the oil in this little bowl here. Hopefully it doesn't crack my bowl. Uh, and then we're going to let them cool on this paper towel. Outside of Evora, we went to an olive farm. Now this was not a factory olive farm. This was a small olive farm still kept in the family. So his farm was only about five acres and he was gracious enough to show it to us. He took us to his 2000 year old olive tree. Absolutely incredible that a tree is still producing amazing olives for him and it's 2000 years old. I just, that blows my mind. He taught us how to taste olive oil. Most of the way that we get vegetable oil today is not through a cold expeller press system. They heat the vegetables, whichever ones they are, you know, we get corn oil, safflower oil, olive oil. They heat the fruit or vegetable to a high point. Now this creates a lot of oil. Hence why the big companies are using it. You don't want that. The more oil that they get out, it's a quick, it's a quick process to heat this stuff at high temperatures, you press it, and you get a lot of oil. But you know what you miss? Flavor. So when you're looking for olive oils, you want to look for cold pressed olive oil. It's a slower process. They do not heat the olive oil at high temperatures. The actual process in the mill is much slower, and you know what? It doesn't produce as much oil. You know what it does produce? Flavor. Make sure you are getting your olive oils and your other oils cold expeller pressed. You will not be disappointed. Okay, I just took the lid off. It's looking beautiful. Like I told you, I let it go to a boil for 30 minutes instead of letting it simmer for an hour. Now with the lid off, I'm supposed to let it simmer for 30 minutes with the lid off and it's going to get paste-like. So we'll see, we'll watch this together and see if we can get this right. The, this city is old, it's amazing. Your sidewalks are little two by two inch square cobblestones. They still only use those cobblestones. The streets are hilly and very narrow. Sometimes your sidewalk is only 18 inches. Absolutely incredible. Their tile facades on the front of their buildings will blow your mind. And um, it's just incredible, the tile work, not only on the buildings, but just, you know, 
in their gardens, in their walkways, tiles everywhere, and absolutely spectacular. And you know what else that, that is absolutely spectacular there? Their graffiti. Now, a lot of people get frustrated, a lot of locals, with the graffiti because they'll do it over these gorgeous tiles. There are other artists that choose places that's much nicer to put a piece of artwork graffiti on, and they are mind-blowing how beautiful they are. Absolutely mind-blowing. And they have these, um, they have days, it's like laundry day. And I know this sounds weird, but their laundry was art. It was absolutely beautiful. If I could count how many pictures or guess how many pictures of laundry I took in the nine days I was there, I'd probably say a hundred. It was absolutely beautiful to, to be hung and blowing from their terraces or they would just have it out their window on the 10th floor. I mean, it was gorgeous. And you know, they, they wear such beautiful colored clothing, these pinks and reds and lime green that it just was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, we have a thick tomato onion paste going on here. Now I cooked this for 20 minutes at a low boil and wow, it's amazing. So we're on to our next step. We are going to add five cups of beef broth. Recipe says preferably homemade. Well, you know what? I didn't have homemade and I didn't even have beef broth. So what am I using? I am using my vegetable soup base instead. Why not? And now butter. We are putting a half a stick of butter in here. I know butter is like, what? I'm putting butter in my low fat tomato soup? It doesn't taste the same if you don't. And then we are going to put our pepper. Now the recipe also says to put in some salt, but I'm going to wait and let this sit for 10 minutes and then I might put in a half teaspoon of salt. And also, remember, tomatoes are very acidic and it's on your individual preference whether you like an acidic tomato based food or a non-acidic. And the way that you make a tomato non-acidic is that you add sugar. So you can put in little bits of sugar at a time. Uh, the, the recipe book says one to two teaspoons. I would do a pinch at a time. Uh, I like acidity in my food. So I am perfectly fine with a soup that probably won't even have any sugar. But I'm gonna give it a try and I'm gonna, you know, try it. But I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes, let this sit, put the lid on. And then I'm going to try my soup. My One of my favorite places was visiting this small town called Sintra. It's an ocean town right near Keshkish, right on the Atlantic. And it was absolutely amazing. They had these beautiful palaces there dating back, I don't even know, hundreds of years. And the um, gardens we went into, botanical gardens we went into, were absolutely amazing. The weather there, to me, was very similar to San Diego, so you can kind of grow anything. Never gets too cold, never gets too hot. So anything from all over the world were grown there. And that botanical garden did not disappoint. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. And I so loved the shopping in Sintra. Their roads, um, in the old part of town were so small, yet cars would still go down and you'd kind of have to stand up against the building and let the cars go by. And, and um, you know, you'd, the, the, the streets had shops on them and just two steps up to get into the shop. They didn't have these big sidewalks, nothing. It was just a wall, a door, maybe a window or two and two steps up. So it, it was very unassuming and beautiful. And the, the people there are so happy that you're there. And it shows by the prices they offer in their, um, their, their shops. It's so reasonably priced to buy linens and, um, and dishes and tile work. Absolutely amazing. I, I just couldn't believe how reasonable everything was. A lot of the corner shops were sardine shops. And these shops were art 
in and of themselves. Each little can, sardine can, had beautiful artwork and the colors were amazing. And I, I tell you, I wanted to just take home the wrappers and, and create a wall of sardine art. It was so beautiful. Oh, that would have been great. I should have done that. It was absolutely incredible. And Okay, it's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna try this and see if I need salt and see if I need some sugar. Now remember, the reason why I wouldn't need salt is because I did put in my better than bullion, so we'll just see. Oh, that's good. So this is gonna sit for, or this is gonna simmer for another hour. It's a long one. Put about a half a teaspoon in there. We'll see how that goes. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. You know, you don't even worry about the skins in there. It's so good for you. Good roughage. Now here's one thing I don't necessarily like about Portuguese soups. They put this fried bread in a bowl and then pour the soup over it. And then your bread gets all soggy. I'm not going to serve it that way. I'm going to serve it with bread on the side, and actually I have a loaf of bread in the oven. I just went and um, I buy the frozen bread dough, the freezer section, and I'm just making a fresh loaf of bread. Buy French bread, whatever. Uh, but if you want to do it super authentic, you would fry your French bread in some butter, let it cool, then you put that down, then you put the soup over it. But we're not done here, guys. After this is set for an hour, then we're going to do this last part that's going to really surprise you. Our trip to the winery took us about an hour and a half to get there. And as we're going through this beautiful valley, you can see the valley open up and go out into the ocean. And all that cool, salty air was just just like meandering through the valley. It was absolutely beautiful. Grapes love that cool breeze and that salty air it makes for great wine. Afterwards, they set us up with this long table where we all sat. And of course, Portuguese people are so proud of their food and wine. They gave us a spread of homemade breads, homemade olive oils. Then we also had cheeses and sausages and we sampled their wines. I bought, I think, four bottles and oh, it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now for the finishing touch. What the Portuguese like to do in their soups is they like to add poached eggs. So you just gently crack some eggs in to your soup that's bubbly and then you're just going to let them sit and poach. I'm only going to do one right now because we're technically really not ready to eat. It's like four hours till dinner. So I'm only going to do one to show you. But you would want to put it in there. If there's six people eating, you put six. You're just going to set it in right on top. And then that's just going to cook. It's bubbling. It's going to cook. Our egg is done. This looks absolutely superb. So now, if you wanted your bread in there to become soggy, you put your fried bread with butter in there. And then you dish up your soup. Oh, with that beautiful egg. Let's put a little bit of our chorico on there. And you know, the chorico you could just kind of crumble. You don't need to keep them in whole pieces. You can chop them, actually. Got chorico on there. Chorizo, pepperoni, and then some parsley. Ah, it's beautiful! Beautiful! Just gonna take a little try here. Mm. Absolutely amazing. What I love about this soup is that it surprisingly has so many onions in it. So it has great texture. It's not just the tomatoes. And then the tomatoes aren't pureed. So it, it has some substance. It's hearty. It's, their food in Portugal is very hearty. They, um, they're not into fancy. They want to be filled up by a dish. And let me tell you, this with an amazing loaf of bread and a bottle of wine 
and some olive oil to dip the bread in. Spectacular. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks for You. Please don't forget to subscribe and come to this amazing city. If you love culture that's over a thousand years old, if you love winding roads, castles, palaces, beaches, cheap, amazing food and cheap, amazing wine, this is the city for you.